welcome back. And we're getting ready to move into our second conversation for today. And that is with the newly elected president of the Christian Workers Union, Dale Troheke. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank Dale. you for inviting me. No problem at all. I find your work to be rather interesting as a trade unionist. As I was mentioning to you briefly, when I look at your background as someone who has always been either in the forefront mm -hmm. of or working behind the scenes with regards to trade unionism, you've, you've done quite a lot over the years. Begin by talking to us about offering yourself uh, for the presidency of the CWU this time around. Um, well, I became involved with the CWU about three or four years ago, three to four years ago, when the, the whole issue had blown up in mm -hmm. respect to um, the stevedores not being happy mm -hmm. with um, the then executive leadership. And um, they had come to Nelson Young and me mm -hmm. for some advice. And so we guided them. And then we saw how it, it, really, it really blew up. And mm -hmm. it was all in the public side. And um, I'm glad you raised the point because suddenly I was in the picture and then mm -hmm. I was out of the picture mm -hmm. and Audrey, my yeah. good friend Audrey Matura was in what became the president. But that was something that was agreed on. It was worked out. Um, at the time, the union was divided when it, all the flare-up occurred. Mm -hmm. And so I was not a unifying person for the union. Mm -hmm. I was seen as strictly a stevedores guy. Um, the union has several bargaining units that it actually yeah. represents. And th they, they have the right as a majority to determine who they want to lead. And Audrey made the better candidate at the time. And I think if everyone recalls or can recall, she had said she would serve one term. Mm -hmm. And I really think um, it takes a lot to do what she did because she's a sole practitioner lawyer. Yeah. And that's a full-time job by itself. Leading the CWU is a full-time job by itself, even with the office support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was again approached, and this time not only by the stevedores, by, but by some of the other groups. And, and um, I accepted. And I accepted because I have tried to stay away from it, but I notice it keeps coming back to me. Yeah. And maybe this is what I should do. Yeah. Now, your background, uh, you have had several different positions uh, as a teacher, you've worked with Belize City Council, you studied industrial relations, so yeah, you have quite a wealth of experience. Taking on a leadership role of a union is a very important one, especially in these times in this country. Um, you said you, you didn't always or from what I'm hearing from you, it seems that you weren't quite sure whether or not you wanted to move into leadership. Yeah. Uh, what about this time and this year made it feel right, other than it just being uh, asked of you once again? Um, well, I've been out of, I've been keeping my corner, as I tell people, mm -hmm. and um, trying to figure out, you know, not to bring the God thing in the, into mm -hmm. the conversation, but I'm a, I try to be a man of God. Mm -hmm. and. I've always wanted to try, I'm always trying to figure out what he wants because my dream was to be a lawyer mm -hmm. and it never happened for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. The three times I got into law school, mm -hmm. I always get drawn back to this movement. Mm -hmm. I have worked over the years advising union in Orindua, utility unions, mm -hmm. and it's always been in the background as you rightfully say. Yeah. And sometimes you shouldn't shy away from leadership when it comes. Mm -hmm. It came this time. I. I'm almost certain I have the capacity and the competence mm -hmm. to do the job. And I have a lot of training, mm -hmm. as you rightfully said. And so I see this as the vocation that yeah. I'm, I was called for. Yeah. I've, I started out in this movement as a labor officer, mm -hmm. which gave you, gives you good grounding in the law itself. Mm -hmm. and, and I have always wanted to work on the worker side. I've been on the management side. But there's a lot more that can be achieved on the worker side. Yeah. Now, taking over the helm after Audrey, um, we know her to be, uh, you know, a firebrand activist. She doesn't mince words. She gets out there and says what she needs to say on behalf of the unions. To follow that, people may think that they want to hold you to those same expectations, 
or question what type of leader for the union will you be as opposed to the last? Um, well, to begin with, each person brings their own mm -hmm. style to the role. Um, and I have to say, if we, if we want to be honest about Audrey, she wasn't always creating problems. Mm -hmm. She was working quietly in the background, doing her thing. Yeah. And, um, and, and what I saw is good because we need to move the movement away from the, the so-called adversarial mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. relationship in the, in the <coughs> workplace to one of more, let us work together. Yeah. And he said just about this workplace where you and I work, but it's about this country. Yeah. Because trade unionism is not just about my job and better benefits and better pay, but also about the country on a whole. Because what each of us does in the workplace and the income we derive goes back into the larger society. Yeah. So there are issues out there that impact us that we must also become actively involved with. Yeah. When you look at the Christian Workers Union, it's arguably one of the largest representative bodies for laborers. But for whatever reason, CWU has become synonymous with the stevedores. In your term as president of this union, what do you foresee will be your role in terms of changing public perception when it comes to either this particular equation and being able to show that it's more than just being able to advocate for the collective bargaining agreement for uh, stevedores versus those who are in the sugar industry and elsewhere? Um. The stevedores, for them, CWU is theirs because mm -hmm. it started out as a stevedore union. Mm -hmm. And then some people thought, hey, we can represent other mm -hmm. bargaining units, which is great. Um, the thing is, we have to, it, we can't be concerned just about our bargaining units. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to be concerned about the other people in society. Mm -hmm. they, the marginalized workers, and I like the word laborer, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, how do you help those people? Mm -hmm. We can take care of our issues within the CWU. I don't want to really change the image mm -hmm. of CWU deliberately. Mm -hmm. It will happen over time. We, over time, people will come to understand it's a general union. It mm -hmm. can represent any group of workers it chooses mm -hmm. to apply to represent, right? But we see the stevedores in the forefront because the stevedores are a group of people that are very vocal, yeah. right? The other groups, and, and that's the thing, it's a general union it represents what you call blue collar, hard working yeah. people, and it also represents white the white color. color, hard working people from the central bank, yeah. mm -hmm. social security. The, and you were integral in the role with the first Caribbean closure. Exactly, and, and those people happen to have better benefits. Mm -hmm. but I know Steve Adore, I know got better benefits. I want better benefits. Mm -hmm. So here I mean more, mm -hmm. right? But we we will we have to the the union is very democratic. Mm -hmm. Everything gotta go to an executive meeting and, and then a general meeting if you want to change certain things in the constitution and how we do our business. So if I if I want to change the image and like I said I'm not that's not gonna be a deliberate thing. It will happen with time. Mm -hmm. What what I think what we need to, uh, I would want the public to understand, that one, it is not solely a stevedore union, mm -hmm. but we have to deal with the issues that really affect the stevedores. And there are some serious and very critical issues that affect them. And so you will hear them again mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, we will be using our social media, so to say, okay. to try and reach out to the public and get to our other members because our members are so far are so so sprawling all over the country we have to utilize the same media that you so, are utilize so you will be uh using different mediums to be able to reach out to yes. to the different uh union members i want to talk just a little bit about uh, some of the areas of priority for you uh now that you have taken on the role of the president of the cwu uh, for example, collectively, the unions are working towards uh, getting the OSH bill passed, mm -hmm. and that's on behalf of all workers throughout the country. Um, 
you and tell a good one. Is this going to be uh, a part of your priority or the other areas that you, as the newly elected president, would really like to make a move on and have an impact on uh, your union members? Almost. Almost all our issues are priorities, so we have to prioritize the priorities. <laughs> Typically, <laughs> yeah. Streamlining. Um, no, CWU, despite mm -hmm. its its broad representation, mm -hmm. struggles with its financials, and that was out there from three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. And and that is because different bargaining units have varied income, so you everybody pays a different fee mm -hmm. to be a membership fee. So we have to revisit that because to support an office like the kind we have so we can deliver the kind of service the members expect, yeah. you have to have the funding for it. So that's one of the things we have to look so at. So structural? Structural, right. We also, CW has, also has to move into its own operation, its own building. And so that's a project we also want to work at. We want to get our own building going and utilize it in a way where we can maybe generate other forms of income from mm -hmm. it. Then you talk about, you brought up the OSH bill, mm -hmm. Miss Marlene, I have to tell you. Mm -hmm. That thing has been on the table maybe about 20 years now. Mm -hmm. It's languishing there. And, and nobody in this country, nobody can mm -hmm. give me a good reason why it can't be passed into law. Mm -hmm. Except that I will say there is no political will to make it pass. I won't make pass any judgment in mm -hmm. respect to my union brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. there is no political will to pass it. Mm -hmm. Because even when it is passed, there will be a sector of this society that will be very unhappy mm -hmm. with it. This thing is about money, and it's about what it cost the employer. And I can look at employers and say, yeah, you're driven by profits. Mm -hmm. But when one man riding at back of one, one each three wheel bike, mm -hmm. where you turn on that down your compound mm -hmm. and flip down one ditch 30 feet mm -hmm. and smash up your hand mm -hmm. and you have to take a piece of bone out of your leg, and put it in here and then turn on a social security and take mm -hmm. care of mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We got to talk health and safety in a very big way in this country. I understand when an employer says, well, I got to manage costs, but make it be reasonable. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we all have to live here. You pay me, and I take my money, and I go back to the shop. I maybe come back to your business, and you get back some of my money. Down south, mm -hmm. there are operations where the employer get back nearly all the money. Mm -hmm. Because they create an economy yeah. around exactly. employees. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. but the OSH bill needs to be passed yeah. with the greatest So you will of be urgency. pushing with that of uh, course, uh, I want as to a become, part of the larger NTUC bill. I want to become very much involved with it. Yeah. I was involved with, I attended meetings with regarding the OSH bill when I was still with Labour, you know. <laughs> that, that is that's a, long, long, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> that should not be sitting there still. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and other shooting. areas uh, that you, you, I hear you speak about internally, getting the CW to a place uh, financially um, that they need to be and also being able to have a, a home base. Um, you're speaking about uh, Oshville being something important. And when we t speak about the stevedores, we know sometimes safety is one of the issues, which is it's why I brought that issue. up. big issue. It's a big issue. Um, and not, then not what only other... For them, not only for them. What other priority areas are you seeing? We need... We have some bargaining units for which we have pending collective agreements. Mm -hmm. Finalizing collective agreements for any of our members, mm -hmm. any of our bargaining units, is, a, is always a priority. Mm -hmm. Because the longer you delay it, the longer it will take for a group of people to maybe enjoy mm -hmm. a salary increase mm -hmm. and earn new benefits. Outside of that, I want to see the movement. I, I want to see CWU, my people, my members, my A team, get involved more in the issues that impact our country. Mm -hmm. This is not, I, I don't see it as a political thing. The politicians can call it whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Every issue that affects taxation in this country tells me I have a right to get involved, mm -hmm. if that is the case. Mm -hmm. I overheard the lady before she left talks about a budget coming up. Mm -hmm. So the budget will affect us in mm -hmm. incredible ways. And we don't know if it will be negative or positive. Yeah. We're revealing all kinds of vibes. Yeah. We're hanging we, in the balance. Right. We, we have to be prepared to voice 
and we need to stop saying, oh, no matter what I do, I say, can I not not change? Mm -hmm. Well, nothing changes unless you if, if that's your position. Mm -hmm. Things will change if you say, we're going to call. I say, you don't have to get up and fight, you know. Mm -hmm. You just have to come out in the numbers. You just have to engage the people mm -hmm. continuously. And this is where the unions need to start using all the media at its, mm -hmm. at its disposal to reach out to people and get them to understand. It's just for example, one of my things I want to do, is, uh, this is a personal thing of mine. I've always planned on doing it. Oh, I really mm -hmm. got to do it. I probably will be held to it. How is it? People are always walking up to me on the streets and asking me about issues in their workplace mm -hmm. when they imply the donate. I develop my blog on a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will put the issues and I explain a lot to people. Yeah. Because there are incredible things happening in some of your workplaces that blow your mind. Yeah. If the law says an employer can't do something or a worker can't do it, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to change it, the way to change it is the people you elect, you tell them to fix it. Right. One of the things, quickly, one of the, I think one of the things is people aren't as knowledgeable and as educated as to what their rights are as workers, such that oftentimes they find themselves disadvantaged, they don't know where to go and who to turn to. Do you find that to be a situation uh, within the Christian Workers Union where other members are coming to you for that kind of advice? Well, interestingly, with unions, and I've always seen it from I was at Labour, you don't find it a lot with unions, union members, because they know they have their unions to yeah. go to. But sometimes they're not happy with their leadership. They're not happy with who is in an office. So they go to labor, mm -hmm. right? Union members are not afraid to ask questions. They're not afraid to assert their role and their right. The people who are afraid are the people who are not unionized. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are afraid. And they happen to be the larger number of people. I would say 75 to 80 percent of all workforce are not represented by a union. That's the majority clearly, mm -hmm. right? So it is those people, those people, some, a lot of those people are even afraid to go to the labor office mm -hmm. because they tell you, they, they, make, they make allegations against labor officers. They, they've been doing that before me, mm -hmm. before I was there. Why I can't go there because the man won't tell my boss that I mm -hmm. can make a complaint and things like that. Not knowing that there are laws, the labor law is set up in such a way that when you speak to persons like you speak out to a lawyer, mm -hmm. it's con it confidential. should be confidential. Yeah. You shouldn't be afraid to go and ask. Yeah. But I want workers out there to understand that it's not only the labor department you can go to for advice if you're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. If you know union <coughs> leaders, people who know the law and understand how the labor law works, you can approach them too. There are lots of people out there willing to help. Yeah, and, and a lot of people really aren't aware of their rights as, as workers and, and it is something we have to work on because the more educated they are about the rights, the more empowered they can be about them. Mr. Tureke, we're grateful that you stopped in this morning just to give us the first preview of uh, your outlook as a uh, new president of the CWU. Um, and I'm sure we will have you back again. Sure thank you for being and thanks here. Thanks for inviting me. All Anytime. Right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be, we'll be talking about World Rotaract Week. So stay tuned. Okay.